On the 6th of February 2022, Queen Elizabeth II became the first monarch to celebrate a Platinum Jubilee. This marks 70 years since she ascended the throne at the age of 25, following the death of her father, King George VI. The National Archives holds a range of historical records related to the life and coronation of the Queen. Elizabeth II was born on the 21st of April 1926, the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York, who would later become King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, in 1936. When the Second World War broke out in 1939, Princess Elizabeth was just 13 years old. Like many children living in cities during the war, Princess Elizabeth and her sister, Princess Margaret, were evacuated, and they spent the majority of the war at Windsor Castle. At the age of 18, Princess Elizabeth joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service, the women's branch of the British Army. The war ended in Europe on the 8th of May 1945. Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret were both able to join the crowd celebrating VE Day outside Buckingham Palace unnoticed. At the age of 21, Princess Elizabeth and Philip Mountbatten, later the Duke of Edinburgh, announced their engagement. They were married in Westminster Abbey in 1947. There are many records in our collection relating to the royal marriage, including this wonderful black and white photograph of Princess Elizabeth and Philip Mountbatten. The text underneath the photograph reads, to the royal pair whose future is pledged to the service of the Commonwealth and Empire, go out the good wishes of all its people. We also hold this family photograph of Princess Elizabeth, Philip Mountbatten, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, King George VI and Princess Margaret. These two photographs were part of a collection of photographs that were used in the Royal Wedding publications. The National Archives also holds many records relating to the Trooping of the Colour, a ceremony which marks the official birthday of the Sovereign. These black and white photographs show Princess Elizabeth attending the ceremony in 1950, celebrating her father's birthday, King George VI. After her accession to the throne, the Queen continued to attend the ceremony on horseback, but in recent years has travelled by carriage. She is well known for her love of horse riding and has continued to ride throughout her reign. Princess Elizabeth gave birth to her first child, Prince Charles, on the 14th of November 1948. This certificate from our collections states that her Royal Highness, the Princess Elizabeth, delivered a son on the 14th of November, 1948, at Buckingham Palace. Two years later, Princess Anne was born on the 15th of August, 1950. This charming family photograph, taken in 1955 by James Reed, shows a young Prince Charles and Princess Anne with the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, along with their corgis. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh later welcomed the birth of two sons, Andrew and Edward, in 1960 and 1964. King George VI's health began to decline in 1951. As a result, Princess Elizabeth began to undertake a number of his royal duties. In early 1952, Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip were in Kenya on a royal tour and were due to visit Australia and New Zealand. On the 6th of February 1952, word arrived of the death of King George VI and consequently, Princess Elizabeth ascended to the throne as Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen's coronation took place on the 2nd of June 1953 in Westminster Abbey. It took 14 months to prepare the coronation. These photographs are just a few we have in our collections, which show some of the preparations at Westminster Abbey for the coronation. The Queen's coronation was the first ceremony to be televised. This document, created by the Ministry of Works, describes how television as well as sound will cover the four main areas of the coronation. The Queen's procession to the Abbey, the Queen's coronation service, the state procession and the Queen's appearance on the balcony at Buckingham Palace. It goes on to state that the BBC has installed special relay stations to carry the television pictures to France, Holland and Western Germany. The coronation was watched by 27 million people in the UK, as well as millions around the world. 
Throughout her reign, the Queen has embarked on numerous tours of the Commonwealth and state visits to countries across the world. In 1953, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh embarked on a seven-month round-the-world tour, visiting 13 countries. These photographs from 1953 show the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh on a visit to Tonga. In this photograph, the Queen is seated at a royal feast, which was given in her honour. The 1960s and 1970s saw an acceleration in the decolonisation of Africa and the Caribbean. Over 20 countries gained independence from Britain as part of a planned transition to self-government. This photograph shows the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which took place in London in 1977. As we celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee this year, it seems fitting to look back at her previous jubilees. This four-page programme for the Queen's Silver Jubilee outlines the various engagements that the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh attended from the 9th of February until the 11th of August in 1977. The Queen and the Duke travelled widely from Falmouth to Edinburgh and they also visited Commonwealth countries including Western Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, New Zealand, Australia and Papua New Guinea. Along with this Silver Jubilee programme, we also hold a number of Downing Street correspondence related to the Jubilee celebrations. This is a particularly interesting letter from James Callaghan, the Prime Minister at the time, to Sir Klaus Moser, who was the chairman of the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden, London. In this letter, dated the 17th of June 1977, the Prime Minister thanks Moser for his hospitality at the Queen's Silver Jubilee performance at the Royal Opera House. He goes on to write, My wife and I, like everyone else, thoroughly enjoyed every minute. Once again, thank you very much indeed. It was unforgettable. To celebrate the Silver Jubilee, the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden organised a gala performance of opera and ballet, which the Queen also attended. Throughout her reign, she has held a weekly audience with Prime Ministers to discuss government matters. Although the Queen is politically neutral, she can advise the Prime Minister on matters. The Queen has seen 14 Prime Ministers hold office during her reign. As the Head of State, the Queen is involved in a number of parliamentary ceremonies. Each year, the Queen officially opens Parliament. The Queen's speech plays an important part in this as it sets out the government's agenda for the coming session. Whilst the Queen reads the speech, it is written by the government, and the National Archives holds these speeches. Throughout the Queen's reign, the Duke of Edinburgh has been by her side, and was her constant strength and guide. Sadly, the Duke of Edinburgh passed away on the 9th of April 2021. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh celebrated their diamond wedding anniversary on the 20th of November 2007, which marks 60 years of marriage. To celebrate this occasion, the Royal Mint produced a number of collector's coins to commemorate the anniversary. These two designs are for collector's coins for the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. The first design of the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh focuses on the theme of country life which can be seen from their attire and the flowers and leaves which frame the coin. The second design is centred around the Queen's coronation and depicts the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh in ceremonial dress. Both of these collector's coins were designed by David Cornell. I thought it would be fitting to end this film with one of my favourite images of the Queen from our collection, which is this portrait by Dorothy Wilding in 1952. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee offers us an opportunity to look back through the National Archives collection at Her Majesty's extraordinary life and reign. Her devotion to the UK and the Commonwealth is undeniable, and she has become a celebrated figure across the world. As the longest serving British monarch in history, the Queen has remained a constant during times of huge social change and has dedicated her life to service.